Oh. This is a bond that defies belief. An extraordinary relationship uh. built on trust. But now Kevin Richardson faces his biggest challenge yet. Moving 27 lions and 14 hyenas to a new home. Boundaries will be pushed to the limit. The lions are going mad. Relationships put to the test. No! And the move comes under threat. Less than a month away from moving animals, and now I get an answer saying no. Now what do we do? Kevin Richardson, a very unusual pride mate. This is just <laughs> unadulterated fun that they're having here. And, uh, oh, Kev's a little plaything. <laughs> <laughs> they enjoy nothing more than to do this with me. This has been going on for 10 years. Oh. The way they play with me is exactly how they play with each other. Only difference is that they do tone it down with me. Are <laughs> you happy? I'm happy. It's great fun. They really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. When you know these girls as well as I do, you realize that I'm just part of their pride, and they accept me as one of their own. I know that there's no untoward behavior. And whenever they do this, it's completely amazing because they don't bite, their claws don't come out. <laughs> Hello, my girl. <laughs> 27 lions make up Kevin's unlikely family. He has known most of them since they were cubs. Born in captivity, they are either former stars from the movie industry or donated from other animal parks. The lions live in a 450 hectare wildlife sanctuary in South Africa, also home to four black leopards and 14 spotted hyenas. But now the reserve they live in is up for sale. And they need to relocate. A huge undertaking. I made a promise to town Napoleon when they were little cubs all those years ago that I would see out their dying days in captivity and I would make damn sure that they had the best life that I could give them. But along the way, we've gathered a bit of uh, baggage. <laughs> All the other lions and hyenas, and uh, they're coming along for the ride, and they deserve everything that town Napoleon have got. The animal's future home is in another province, a new sanctuary already under construction. In all, 13 enclosures and a 35-hectare enrichment area. It borders the 18,500 hectare Deno King Reserve, home to Africa's big game, including elephants, white rhino, and wild lions. Now, the pressure of the relocation is mounting. Each journey is a 220 kilometer round trip. But the biggest hurdle of all is yet to come. Every captive lion in South Africa needs a permit to be housed in a park. But securing a permit to live in a different province is no easy feat. All I'm trying to do is relocate an existing facility from one province to another. You'd swear it would be as simple as somebody saying, that's fine, meet the specs, and we'll give you your permit. Not, not so, not the case. It's uh, really irritating. Yeah, are you also irritated, my girl? And you, my boy? Come lie here.
Despite the holdups, Kevin needs to carry on preparing for the move. He hopes to form a new pride of lions. Sisters Meg and Amy have never lived with other lions before. But now that could be about to change. Yes. They really are the two loves of my life. They're nine-year-old lionesses. And as we prepare to move the park to the new premises, I've got to consolidate animals. And this means that these two lionesses are going to have to go with three boys. And Zar, Bongani, and Suja are the perfect suitors. In the wild, as males come into prides, there is a bit of turmoil as females get unsettled. And there can be fighting where the, where the females are a little bit more resistive. Lions are the only cats to live in social groups. The females often stay in their birth prides, whereas the males form nomadic coalitions before taking over a pride of their own. But there's no guarantee that this introduction will work. To introduce them in a careful way, I've got to keep Megan Amy locked up, and then I'm going to introduce one of the boys, his name's Saw. Just let them sniff each other, get used to each other through the fence. With the girls safely locked away, Zar is released into the enclosure. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> Look at her. Look how tentative she is. She's already submitting. He's a gorgeous boy. His grimace is called the Fleming response. It draws scent molecules into the Jacobson organ, a highly sensitive gland. It can help an animal interpret all kinds of information, such as whether a female is fertile and ready to mate, or even what kind of mood they're in. Yeah, it went very well, my boy. You're a lover boy. Yes, you are. Hello, my Who is this in your enclosure, yeah? Who is this, yeah? Who is this boy here? Eh? Do you like him? For Kevin, hey, there's more at stake than whether the lions accept each other. I must say, this is a bit of a worrying time for me because I've got such a great relationship with Megan and Amy, and I'm just wondering how three males are now going to affect our relationship. And it is a bit for selfish reasons, but having said that, I'm going to be extremely happy to see them now living in a pride. With everything calm, the next two lions are let in, Suja and Bongani. At first, all seems to be going to plan. But then suddenly, the mood changes. In the excitement, Suja and Zar start a fight over the lionesses. It's not the outcome Kevin was hoping for. You could see he was agitated. He walked up to the bars with a different intention. The girls picked that up immediately. <laughs> yes! That just fueled the fire and caused, you know, tension. And, and that caused tension with Saw and, and Suja. And they had a, a huge, huge fight. Suja becomes possessive over the two lionesses, scent marking his territory. I think we're going to go ahead with it and, and just take it a little bit slower than we initially anticipated. Uh, once we do the entire release, we're going to have to monitor it very carefully. For the sake of forming a pride, if this is going to cause havoc, then I'm not, I'm not for doing that. I would rather try and figure out how we're going to accommodate them at the new place. The lionesses are left in peace. The next week will prove critical to see if the potential pride mates settle down. At Denoking, 
the new enclosures are half completed. And in one of them, there's an early arrival. A 32-month-old wild male lion. Where's his injuries? The young male has been fighting with another wild pride. He's been tranquilized and brought in to recover from his injuries in safety. But his brother wasn't so lucky and died. The two older male lions were obviously trying to push out any of the younger guys or get rid of them simply because if you're an older male lion and you come across two younger guys, it makes perfect sense to just eliminate them from the gene pool because then you don't have a problem of them ever siring young or them ever coming and, and taking over a pride from you. Over the last century, wild lion populations in sub-Saharan Africa have been decimated. In some areas, losing up to 90% of their population and vanishing from 80% of their historic range. Tragically, some estimates now stand at around 20,000 remaining animals. As this lion is part of a reintroduction program to the Deniking Reserve, the decision was made to intervene. The interesting question that people are gonna ask is why are we interfering with a lion that's in the wild. Each lion that's reintroduced is actually a precious, precious commodity. Um, that's, that's the reason. Once the, the lion populations here in Denikeng are established and, you know, are quite sustainable and there's, there's coherent pride structures, I'm pretty sure that if something like this happened in the future, I don't think they would intervene. Once he recovers, the young male will be released in a different section of the reserve away from the pride he was fighting with. You know, lions are tough, eh? and they're resilient. And I think he's going to be just fine. He's going to be able to recuperate. And, you know, hopefully in a couple of weeks, we can just release him into this, this area, and he can get on with his life. I'm going to leave you and love you. Keep well. Bye-bye. It's a big day for 18-month-old hyena brothers, Luke and Nieba. Having grown up in a nursery, they're going to join adult hyenas for the first time. Ah, uh -uh, bongo. Hyenas have a strict social hierarchy. Individuals ranked by their status within the clan, from the most submissive to the dominant. Highly gregarious, they use body language and a complex range of sounds to communicate their rank and reaffirm their social status. Luke and Nieba will be joining a clan of males. In this case, led by dominant hyena, Bongo. We are expecting a bit of ear biting, neck pulling, fur flying. He is a mean guy, but if it goes well, then the rest of the clan shouldn't be a problem. Because if he's accepting, hey, if you're accepting, then the rest are going to follow suit, we hope. Bongo has already been introduced to Luke and Nieba through the bars of a cage. But now they're going to be let out together. And the only way to sort out their pecking order is hyena style. It's a little bit heart-wrenching because you know that they are going to get a fair beating and amount of abuse. Uh, but it's absolutely necessary uh, for them to find their place in this clan. And yeah, we just hope it goes well. OK, so good luck. Mwah. And you, Mwah. you're going to be good. You're going to be fine. <coughs> you know, no matter how many times I do this, it's never easy to watch. It's really heart-wrenching. Straight away, Bongo singles out Luke. What Bongo's done immediately is he's gone for the most dominant male, and he is showing him who's boss. While it looks violent, there's little damage. So far, it's just neck biting. So it's, it's, it's a lot more noise than anything else. <laughs> He locks onto Luke's thick fur and asserts his dominance. He's submitting. 
That's it, boy. Come on. It serves as a warning to Luke's brother, Nieba, not to try his luck. What worried me was that I thought he had his ear. And if he bites his ear, he can literally bite his ear off. <laughs> Luke totally submits, while Brother Nieber keeps a low profile. The initial aggression soon subsides, and Bongo begins to relax. Luke is even brave enough to mark his territory. What's also good is he's getting tired, so Bongo's running out of steam. That's a good thing. Having proven his status, Bongo retires for a cool down. You thought you'd just beat them up and it'll be over quickly. They're putting up a good fight. Yes. It's calmed down nicely. And in fact, okay. He's not even interested in him anymore. This has gone well. With Bongo safely out of the way, it's Luke's turn for a well-deserved dip. Seems he's through with you. You got no injuries. Let me look. Let me look. It's absolutely amazing. There's not even a, a drop of blood. Now you can appreciate how an animal of this, this size can compete with a lion. I mean, they're incredibly tough, but what's even more amazing is they're extremely intelligent. The animals will be closely monitored. If they settle well, they'll spend increasing amounts of time together to form a cohesive unit before the rest of the clan are introduced. There's still no news on whether the application for the permits to move the lions has been accepted. The deadline is fast approaching when they need to vacate their current home. There's the kingdom and there's the new farm. Kevin is meeting with assistant Rodney Nombakana to discuss the best route to the new sanctuary and how many trips they will need to move the animals. Maybe we should take much more of a quieter route. To minimize stress, they need to avoid the heat of the day and the worst of the traffic. So that would be route two? Yeah. OK. Let's go through how many trips it's actually going to take. Enclosure one, Siam's group. Mm -hmm. Who's going to load? We're all gonna load. All gonna load. Except probably. Except uh, uh, probably be two trips. It's yeah. not gonna be one trip. Next one, Napoleon. One trip. Hyenas. Yeah. Actually, one trip. Okay. And it's trailer. Okay. 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm. Less. Less than we thought. Large predators are usually sedated to be transported but they are notoriously difficult to tranquilize. The dose can be hard to measure, leaving them susceptible to coming round too early. And the drugs can lead to choking and heart failure. But Kevin has a unique advantage. Hello. The lions trust him enough to load straight into a van. Whew, so tight in there. Here come, guys. Meaning they won't need to be tranquilized when they move to their new home. Yeah. Today, a coalition of five males is being released into a different enclosure. The change of scene gives them a chance to explore and act out natural behaviors as they would in the wild. It's always such fun to see them when they first come in because they get out the vehicle and they just start sniffing around and exploring, basically smelling all the the smells from the previous group that's been in there. Hey, boy, you having fun, eh? Look at that, huh? Their senses are heightened because this is what happens in the wild. And in order to keep them mentally fit and just physically fit, this is why we do it. When you see the lions here at the kingdom, you can actually physically see the, the enjoyment that they get out of it. They have an absolute blast. Back at the hyenas, Bongo, the dominant male, has fully accepted youngsters Luke and Nieba. 
now it's time to release a new member into the clan. Good boy. Vinci, the lowest ranking hyena. So this is the life of a subordinate hyena male in a hyena clan. Old Vinci over here had his ear and his tail bitten off literally the day he was born. Uh, we knew that the female had had two cubs and because they were the same sex, Vinci's a male, because they were the same sex, uh, the one dominated the other. And baby hyenas are born with a full set of deciduous teeth. The canines and the incisors are uh, very capable of biting an ear off. And that's exactly what happened. So we had to intervene and we hand raised him. And he's a fantastic animal. He's got such a lovely nature. If the introduction goes well, Kevin will release leader Bongo back in with the three of them. It's very difficult to tell aggression with Vinci because he's got no tail, in case you haven't noticed, and also no ear. <laughs> and you could sort of make out a little stompy going up and down. Um, but they can tell. I mean, these hyenas can tell like that. And there's absolutely no aggression here, although nearby, as you can see, he's still a little bit nervous about the whole situation. He's a good boy. Hello, my friends. This is wonderful. There's not even vocalizations, which is great. And there's no squealing, there's no deep guttural tones, there's no intimidation. Hey, Vincy, I thought you'd come out here and try and get a little bit higher in the corporate ladder of the hyena world. He's a beautiful hyena, yes you are. With the three getting on well, Kevin decides to release Bongo, the dominant male. Hello, Bongo loser! Hello, Bongo loser! It's hard to predict how he will react or how aggressive he will be. Ah, uh, Vinci. Hey, Bongo, you haven't even come to say hello. Come here. How's it, my buddy? Yes, look here. Yes, hello. How are you? Eh, hey, how are things? Look, slowly but surely your clan's coming back together. It's coming back together. <laughs> okay, so far so good. Mongo raises his tail in a dominant display, just to remind Vinci he's still number one. Vinci is a little bit unsure, so he kind of does something and then he looks back at Bongo for recognition and reassurance, as if to say, is this good? Should I do more? Look, this is the way it should be. No aggression. It's really gone well. There's been no neck biting. There's been a little bit of talking, like that. Um, and that talking can go from that to a giggle to frenzy in a matter of seconds. Just one wrong touch, one wrong move. So you've got to be quite careful when he starts to talk like that. So it's gone very well. We're going to leave them all together for the rest of the day. And then we'll come back later and see how it's going. With the introduction so far a success, another three hyenas will be gradually introduced to make a new clan of seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's important they fully integrate before the move to the new sanctuary, if they are to settle in successfully. Any infighting could be easily aggravated by a change of routine and territory. Hey, 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 come on, Bongo. Two weeks have passed since Meg and Amy were first introduced to three males, Zar, Bongani, and Suja. But the introduction did not go to plan, leading to a final decision. So Meg and Amy are both on their own again. <laughs> We've decided that mixing them with the three boys is not going to work. We tried everything. Uh, the boys just didn't settle down. They were at each other's throats. Meg and Amy were petrified. Slowly, 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 slowly. Now they're back on their own. It means that Kevin's relationship with them is no longer under threat. 
<laughs> what was really amazing is the moment we took Meg and Amy out of the enclosure where they were from, from the boys and put them back in their normal enclosure, the attitude change was unbelievable. They, it was almost as if they were saying, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking us out of there. That was the best thing you could ever have done. Are oh, you so happy to see me? I'm very happy to see you too, my sweetie. And they were back immediately, like a light switch, back to their beautiful, loving natures. It means Kevin will have to build another enclosure for them at the new reserve. These two girls have just cost me a whole lot more money. But I'll tell you something, they are absolutely worth it. Come, girl. Understanding the different characters and moods of his animals is key to making the move a success. Hello, my girlies. But to do that takes a great deal of time and dedication. Come lie down here. It's all lie down here. And is the foundation for Kevin's bond with them. I think people need to actually understand is that the reason why they can't uh, sit here with this particular group of lions is simple. <laughs> they don't have a relationship. And that's what it's about. Social animals all have a relationship with each other. And it, you know, the relationship varies from individual to individual. But the, I suppose the... the, the ah! <laughs> I suppose the example to use would be if somebody who doesn't know these lions or is a stranger to them comes in here, fair game. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, big boy. Hello, big boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, yes, my boy. Kevin is visiting Nikita. Hello, my girl. Are you wanting your pilchards? A black leopard. Her dark coat is the result of a rare recessive gene causing a condition called melanism. Go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go. Let's go, let's go. Let the tin open first. She's about 10 years old now. And as part of her enrichment, uh, her favorite thing is to give her some pulchards. It's really good for her. It's got omega-3s, it's good for the coat. And she absolutely loves it. Not my hand. Although they look small, gentle, leopards are incredibly strong. <laughs> the real problem with leopards is that they have an extremely short fuse, and uh, the power to weight ratio is incredible. You'll see a leopard in the wild um, weighing in at about 60, 65 kilos, being able to carry in an impala, a fully grown impala, up a tree in its jaws. There's <laughs> my finger. When you see even Nikita, a lot of people see her and they go, but she's such a small cat. But it's the, the attitude and the mindset that goes with that little dynamite package. That's what you've got to worry about. And unlike a lion who only has really sharp claws on the front paws, leopard's claws, all four paws, extremely sharp, like razor blades. Ah, 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 ah. And for their size, really incredibly long teeth. So you put that in this package together with this mind, you've got an extremely successful animal. Oh! <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I mean, they're not these mindless man-eaters too. And um, it's just, it's a different animal and you just got to know what you're dealing with and work around it. At Deno King, the new leopard enclosures are nearly ready. They will need to have extra high and wide fences. Leopards are expert climbers making them master escape artists. So the enclosures are coming along pretty well. When it comes to uh, building the perfect leopard enclosure, one has to make sure that it's got ample uh, foliage and trees. The leopards do love to climb, and they like to spend lazy, hot summer days on the top of the trees uh, with a nice view. In the wild, leopards are solitary, only coming together to mate. But as Nikita is in captivity, she has been paired with a male called Cole for company. This enclosure on the right here is actually one of my favorites. Uh, it just worked out perfectly. When I saw the area, I said, this is gonna be for Kyle and Nikita. 
It's just fantastic. It's got beautiful trees. It's got the bush. It's, it's right on the, the crest, so the views are spectacular. I think they're going to be very happy. Each of the 13 enclosures is being designed to try and keep the animals as stimulated as possible. We want to give the animals as natural a habitat as possible. In the wild, obviously, lions have got a diversity of habitats and they have choice. Over here in captivity, it's simply what we provide for them. So a couple of nice tall acacia trees with a nice umbrella is imperative. I mean, they're going to use those trees for shade and uh, for scratching on. And yeah, it's just visually a lot more appealing. <laughs> With the enclosures just weeks away from being finished, Kevin is hoping for good news on the permits to move the lions. I was just curious to see how far you're going to be get, getting going. But after four months of waiting, it's not the answer he was expecting. I've, I've had basically the answer back on the permits, and it's a no, refuse. So what do we do now? I, do I stay? Do I just leave it? Do I just walk away and say, fine, thank you? It's really about giving these lions the lives they deserve. Let them live out their lives. The first step after refusal is an appeal, and we, that's what we're going to do. These aren't just lions. These are seriously like my buddies. I know them all intimately. You know, they're good points, they're bad points. I can't just turn my back on them. It would haunt me for the rest of my dying days. It's not a question of, are we going to get this permit? It's a question of, we, we have to. It, it's, it has to be, it has to happen. It's like, there's no, there's no, no. It can't, there can't be a no. We're not prepared to just lie on our backs and let it go by. We, we're going to fight. Despite the permit still being held up, Kevin must carry on preparing for the move. Most of his animals are happy traveling in the van. Hello, guys. But there are a few who are more reluctant to load. Oh. And Tao is one of them. Oh. Pride mates Tabby, Maddie Tao, and Napoleon are far more confident. OK. Who's going to load? Let's go. Come. Let's go. Yeah. There we go. Napoleon is straight in. There we go. Yeah, Tao. Unlike his brother. Yeah. Uh-oh. Tao, you've been a problem. Kevin needs to up his confidence. Tao, there. There we go. And in. Just got to get him used to it and let him understand that this is not going to hurt him. As you can see, he's a bit nervous going into the, the vehicle. Go one more time. OK, Tab, that's good. There and there. Good boy. And there. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Tab. Yeah. There we go. Patience finally pays off. Ah, there goes Tab. Great. Excellent. Good boy. Tab's even getting cheeky now. He's enjoying it so much in there. Eh? Are you getting all possessive over this place? It's incredible. Look at you. From a line that didn't want to load to a line that doesn't want to come out. But that's really good news for me, because I, I would have been really upset to have to dart Tao. He's getting, he is old. And um, you know, putting them under an anesthetic for any length of time at this age is never good for them. So I'm just really pleased that he's loaded well. You saved yourself the pain and agony of an anaesthetic. Ah! Oh! Oh, now you're getting all grumpy with everyone, huh? While Kevin expects most of the lions to load easily, the hyenas are a different challenge. Everything comes down to clan dynamics. And on the big day, Squabbles could easily upset the balance. What are you doing? This is Gina. She's the matriarch. Uh, she's been in charge for quite some time. And there is Gina 
asserting her dominance. She's going to give you a good one just now. Yeah. You're pushing your luck, bud. And I'll tell you something, I wouldn't like to be on the receiving end of those jaws. Hello, my girl. Come, let's all calm down. Huh? Stop that. A hyena's <laughs> jaw strength is far stronger than a lion's, capable of crushing through the thickest of bones. <laughs> the front molars alone can generate a pressure of 800 kilograms. Who's stronger, me or you? Well, it's incredible to be in the middle of this because here's the matriarch. She could quite easily take my face off, but here she's putting another clan member in their place. And that actually so happens to be the male. Hey, you, are you being in trouble? Hey, don't come pick on me now. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Don't take advantage. One needs to become quite a master in learning Hyenas posturing and, and body language. In my earlier years, I got put in many, many times. Maxi, it's a game. It's a game. <laughs> and that was really because I didn't understand how the hyena clan worked. I didn't understand the dynamics. But as the years went on and as I got bitten less and less, uh, I started to understand the way that these little brains work. This is not aggression, this is play. So she's playing with me and she's been all, what I love about Gina <laughs> is she gets all flirtatious and uh, she comes and she nips and she gets all flirty with me, which uh, really is a special moment, but especially <laughs> knowing <laughs> that she's the dominant individual in this clan. <laughs> Kevin wants to see if all of Gina's clan will load in the van at the same time. OK. Right. If they do, it means he can move them in just one trip. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Come. He knows some individuals are more nervous than others, <laughs> but he hopes they will take their leave from matriarch Gina. You want to go for a ride, huh? Yeah, Gina. Backed up with the help of a meaty treat or two. Gina is the first to investigate. Come, Shan Shans. Followed by Shanzi, the dominant male, who soon makes himself at home. Oh, this is my favorite place in the whole world. Yeah. <laughs> we can't get him out. <laughs> Look, it's going really, really well, except the hyena that I thought would get in the quickest is actually just standing back. Uh, that's old Maxi. She's normally quite dominant in this clan. But what's really good is we got four. Uh, that's a good start. Uh, they're, they're pretty comfortable loading. It's just we're missing three, and these are the critical three. That's Ringo, it's uh, Spunnies, and surprisingly, Maxi. Oh, here you come. Yeah, Max. Oh, you look good, cool. There we go. Here we go, you feel like you're missing out, eh? Max, 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 Max! It will be important to build Maxie's confidence step by step over the next few weeks. Here we go. Max, 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 Max. OK, so we're even making some inroads now with Maxie, who's figured that she's missing out on some tasty treats. I guess we're going to hit these snags all, all the way through, trying to move this, this uh, kingdom. But suddenly, in all the excitement, Gina and Shanzi decide to exert their dominance over Maxi, who quickly submits to their aggression, adding to an already tense situation. You better get in here. I promise you, it's safer. It's safer. Come. Come. She's still very, very nervous, but she's calming down. Yeah, you're calming, my girlie. Look here. Look here. Yeah. Good sign is eating. Have some patience and let her do it in her own time. No greedy guts. We know you load. We're not worried about you. But she's uh, far more confident and uh, it's been a good exercise. Back at the kingdom, it's time for a well-needed catch-up with Livy, Ginny and Vajetsi. With a battle on his hands chasing the permits, 
Kevin is worried his relationship with the lions is suffering. Oh, no, don't get the bottle, you naughty thing. And with the younger animals, spending time with them is critical to maintain the bonds. Come, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been a while. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. The way I pride myself on working with lions is obviously having a, the ability to interact with them on a very familiar level. If my relationship wasn't about that and it was merely about coming in with a big stick, then it, then it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> I see you, girl. <laughs> like any relationship, if you don't work at it, you're going to lose it. And it's even more so important when you're working with animals that can potentially kill you. Stop biting me. Hey. So relationships are key to what I do, and, and therefore absolutely paramount that I get here as often as I can. And I simply just have not been able to do it. And it is a bit of a worry because, you know, I see it with guys like Fayetzi. I mean, look, he's not, he's not uh, a problem, but he's doing things that he doesn't normally do. He's trying me. He's testing the waters. He's seeing how much he can get away with, which he's doing right now. He's biting my leg. <laughs> Naughty guy. I love my boy. <laughs> he's full of it. When you're away for a long period of time, then he's going to try all the more harder to assert his dominance or just to show you that he can do what he wants. Hey, and you can't, because you've got me here now. Yes. After eight weeks recuperating at Deno King, the wild male lion has made a full recovery. He has been fitted with a GPS collar, which will allow him to be tracked in real time. Now we can track his movements. We can go and check up on him every day, and we can see how he's doing. We can see if he's hunting, um, where he's going, and what he's really getting up to. Today, he will be released. The collar will help researchers to gather data on his behavior and his territory. I'm extremely happy with the way Things have turned out with him. His wounds have all healed very nicely. He's fit and strong. Hopefully we see Sat 153, as he's affectionately known, being free again, which is going to be a fantastic thing. The feeling of liberating an animal into the wild, I tell you, it is extremely exhilarating. And this is just fantastic, because this is where lions should be. Lions should be out in the wild. Although wild lions are under threat, numbers of captive lions in South Africa are on the rise. Many are bred for the cub petting industry, but when they grow up, are sold into canned lion farms for trophy hunting. With limited space, and because Kevin can't guarantee where cubs will end up, his lions are not allowed to breed. All the females are given contraceptive implants. Today, it's Tabby's turn. She's been separated from her pride mates. Vet Claire Speedy will use a pole dart to anesthetize the lioness. All right. Hello, my girlie. Oh. Let me say that Tabby's seen a few needles in her time, so she, and she knows Claire well. <laughs> so she's not charmed, to say the least. And she's not cooperating, but uh, We'll get it out there. While Kevin distracts Tabby. Good catch. Claire grabs her chance. Okay. Get it? Good one. All right. Giving a line anesthetic is a risky procedure. Every animal reacts differently. And as Tabby is 15 years old, her metabolism is slower putting her at risk of complications and even death. They need to keep a close eye on her. She has been given the lowest drug dose possible, which means they need to act quickly. 
even lions that appear unconscious have been known to suddenly wake up and lash out in their confused state. It's not something I enjoy doing. It's something that's necessary. We want to prevent the breeding here, and that's why we just need to keep putting her on the contraceptive implant. And in another two years or, or so, she probably won't be breeding anyway. So this is probably, hopefully, the last time. Each implant lasts around two years, but it has an unfortunate side effect, weight gain. OK, that's in. Looks all right. The breathing is really nice. She'd have to go on a diet. She's on a diet, Claire. She doesn't have to go on one. She's on one. Hey, Tabby, close your ears. Don't listen to the horrible vet. She's given the reversal drugs to bring her round. How long does the reversal take? It takes about 30 minutes or so. OK. Yeah, you don't want to wake up too quickly. Too quickly. Shock to the system. The drugs are working. The drugs are working. Today uh, went really well. Um, it was a straightforward procedure. She's still a bit dopey. I thought uh, she's up on her feet walking around, but she's stumbling a bit. So we can't release her now, because if we did, the rest of the guys in the pride will probably, you know, jump on her and start picking on her a bit. So it's always best to get them fully conscious and then do a release. Hey, my girl, but you're looking, you're looking good. You're up and about, which is the main thing. For now, Tabby is left to recover from her post-anesthetic headache. At Gina's clan, it's time for a final practice load. Despite the permits being refused, Kevin has spent the last three weeks familiarizing them with the travel van. Yeah, in you go. He wants to make sure there are no big surprises in store on moving day. Woody. Woody. Da, 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 da. You chew my rubbers, I will smack your bum. I will smack your bum. But there's still a problem with Maxie. Max, she coming. She's yet to prove she's brave enough to climb on board. Maxie, Maxie. Maxie! Yeah, Max. I'm just going to leave it for a bit and, and let them just get used to being around here. And hopefully she'll realize, like now, that it's not a threat. And actually, it's not so bad being in the van. Yes, look, they're all having fun. Why don't you go there? Come. Yeah, Mugali, come. You are normally the most confident animal. And now? Hey? One of the problems is, is even if you do manage to get her in the van and you slam the door in her face, she's going to freak out. And that's not good. We want her to be happy and calm and confident in the van. OK, you, you guys come here. Come, 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 come. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she refuses yeah. to jump in, there's a lot at stake. Maxie, yeah. It means on moving day, she will have to be tranquilized instead, causing extra stress to the animal. Yeah. Max. Unfortunately, she's not bright enough to realize <laughs> that it's for her own good that she must go in the van. We want her to be calm. And you're not calm, my girl. You look very, very nervous today. Why are you so nervous today? Hey? Maxie? What's up? You're giving hyenas a bad name. There's an added problem. Another hyena, Ed, also won't load. And the clan is extra nervous. What really can pose a problem is on the day, there can be some squabble happening within the clan. Now, today we've come, Ed normally loads easily. And today we've come and he doesn't want to come anywhere near these girls. So clearly that's indicating to me that there's been something going on and he just doesn't want to get bitten by, by them. So he's just keeping his distance. So it just goes to show, despite the best laid plans, you know, on the day when it comes to move, something like this can happen. So we always got to have a plan B. And, and that's why we will have the vet on standby. Ed, and you, what's the story? What's happening, buddy? Yeah, Max, Max, yeah. With Ed and the rest of the clan on high alert, 
Maxie has lost her big chance to finally brave the van. You don't want to get drugs, Mogulli. Drugs are not cool. I promise you, you'll wake up with a headache. Unfortunately, it's not looking good with Maxie loading. She seems to just be completely intimidated by the vehicle. And um, unfortunately, I think we're flogging a dead horse and we need to move on. <laughs> on moving day, she will have to be tranquilized, along with another hyena, Ringo, that also refuses to join the rest of the clan and load. Uh, can I make a recommendation? Don't move animal parks every day. You know, 95% of our animals do load. So I can imagine if another reserve similar to this had to move, it would be an absolute nightmare, a logistical nightmare, because you'd have to dot all the animals, every single one. So I suppose we should count ourselves blessed. Hey, Ed, what's going on? Come, boy. It's been seven long months since Kevin first applied for the permits to move the animals. Despite his best efforts, they were refused. At the new reserve, the enclosures are standing empty. But today, there's finally been news of the appeal. Finally! <laughs> finally, we have permission to move. So today I got a call, permits have been approved. So it's just this big weight lifted after all the fight and the struggle. So get to move the lions to their new home. <laughs> I thought it was pertinent that I would come tell these two boys first, Cow and Napoleon, the very first two lions that I ever started working with, that we got a new home together now. They're getting old, they're 15 years old now, they don't have much time, and they're going to live out the remainder of their years in the most beautiful place imaginable. So I couldn't be happier. Hey, did you hear that? I don't even think you understand what's going on. How much I've been fighting for you. The battle has finally been won. But will the months of preparation for the move now pay off? Hello, How will the animals settle into their new home? <laughs> For now, though, it's time to celebrate. Before the lions face their biggest challenge yet.